Welcome into the Martin Houston Show on Tide 100.9 on your radio dial. The Martin Houston Show fan page on Facebook. Don't forget to also give a like, give a follow at Martin Houston 35 at Martin Houston 35 on Twitter. You can stay in touch, stay in the know, and keep us with you on the go through those methods as well as Tide 100. Point nine, uh, dot com, tie109.com, as well as download the app and take us with you wherever you go, uh, the Top 100.9 app. It's going to be a great show. Uh, we've got a great show lined up for you. you got a little three-point shot with full court press. We just combined the two today, and we'll be talking a little Bama hoops and maybe some NBA craziness with the trades and uh, also, a quick look around the SEC that will be coming up here in just a little bit with Flex. So if you're basketball, gal, or guy, stay tuned for more of that conversation. Going to dig a little deeper into the recruiting, looking at what some of the different players bring to the table. What is that I'm getting? You know, it's, it's great to talk about the stars, but what do they really bring to the table and which guys may or may not have a chance to break into the rotation and be able to help the team this year? Will it be the 13 early enrollees? Will it be the grad transfer? Will it be one of the 12, or will it be a combination thereof? We'll talk about that right here in a few minutes. But we'll start today's program off with a couple highlights and then also hit the uh, four quarters. Quick news, Alabama finally makes it official. Freddie Roach is a coach at the University of Alabama. He has been officially hired now. And we understand how that all works, but he's officially now back with the Crimson Tide. Nick Saban's excited about having him back on the trail for recruiting and coaching. And speaking of recruiting and coaching, Carl Scott, the DB coach, uh, sits atop the SEC recruiting ranking. So uh, Nick Saban, maybe we, we several people wanted to know if he'd make some coaching changes and would Carl Scott be one of those? Because if you look at it, there's been some disappointment with how the uh, DBs have you know played, especially down the stretch. And that, of course, falls on Carl Scott as far as the cornerback goes. But he... Um, he set atop the recruiting uh, rankings when we may go into a little bit about who he was able to bring in. But let's go ahead and click over to the other side of the glass and get a little four quarters. Good morning, Fletch. How you doing, sir? I'm blessed, man. Glad to glad to be here. Glad to be here. And uh, I'll start it off on the out yesterday a lot about it, but. I just want to uh, rehash a little bit your thoughts. Alabama, very active in terms of signing guys yesterday. We heard Saban remind us he was still busy, but has this later signing period kind of created a vacuum where you're going to be disappointed if you don't sign your full class the way Clemson? Yeah, I... I, I... I think so. I, you know, I think you point out a, a valid point. Uh, when when um, December happened, look how excited Clemson was because they had the number one class. The reality of it is Alabama leapfrog Clemson, Georgia leapfrog Clemson uh, to take over the one and two spot. But the Clemson folks seem to be fine and happy because – they had the number one class, and they didn't go out and try to sign anyone else uh, on National Signing Day uh, 2.0. And so uh, it has created this perception of failure when you've got 22 in the barn, uh, but you only need to try to get one or two more bales of hay, and you just can't, you don't close on those guys. Well, closing on those guys, it's not that these guys have lost their recruiting touch, per se. It's the fact that um, McKinley Jackson 
was recruited by virtually every major SEC school in the country. And Nick Saban hosts a um, recruiting dinner uh, for the Red Elephant Club. Um, and he said something at that Red Elephant Club that, that I thought was interesting. He talked about um, re the recruiting process and he talked about closing and how, how, how to finish. He said, there used to be one of me out there and they were all on my staff. Now there's five of me out there that I'm having to compete against. And what he's saying is the, the methods that he used to use to close, Kirby used on him, <laughs> Jimbo Fisher used on him, Jeremy Pruitt used on him. You know, I mean, and you go back and look over the last three to four years, those three guys especially have pulled guys on the last day, Fletch, that Nick Saban three years ago, four years ago, before those guys were out there head-to-head -head in the SEC, he would have pulled down. So uh, definitely has created a, a vacuum that I think leads to disappointment unless you have a perfect signing day where you get everybody. I think we'd have been disappointed if we got McKinley Jackson and Rake Straw went to Missouri because we would have felt like we got spurned by a three-star. I don't think it would only – thing, only thing that could have happened for Alabama fans to be absolutely happy, those of, who are disappointed, would be to have signed both of those guys plus the guys we got on top of it. And – I want to get your thoughts. Brian Hartline from Ohio State, former NFL receiver, was rated the top recruiter according to 247 Sports. Uh, he got two five stars, four four star recruits. Is this the method that you should use when you're going and finding these recruiting coaches? Should it be a younger guy with, with playing experience who has an attachment to your school? Well, I, I don't know if it has to be as much in a attachment to the school that doesn't hurt but there's to me there's a couple key things that's going to make recruiting more effective for your school and that is first of all someone who can relate okay and the more relationship in, in sales uh fletch we have something we call touch points okay a, a touch point can be a phone call an email you know a text uh, a, a letter in the mail you know, uh, a networking opportunity where you're in person. Well, in, in recruiting, the touch points would be, uh, can I relate to you as a person? <laughs> you know, uh, and so then a touch point is, is, is he an alumni, alumnus? Is he, is he, I mean, and, and people are going to think I'm being racist with this. Is he my race? If, if you don't think that matters, it does. Uh, is he in my, even, is he even in my cultural uh, space, not that, now that's not black or white, that's just, is, is he 65 years old or is he 30 years old? Can he relate to the, the football that I play and the way I grew up? And So there's so many touch points, and these guys, that's what you're beginning to see. I think, you know, you saw what Miami did with Ed Reed. I don't know how good a coach Ed Reed is, but if Ed Reed shows up as your, at your house and you're a DB or a local kid to Miami, Miami is all of a sudden, they're in the door. They, they may not close, but they're at least in the door with Ed Reed knocking on your door and saying, hey, this is Ed Reed. I want to come talk to you about playing football for Miami. Come on over. So absolutely a great move. And, you know, is he going to do that every year? Maybe, maybe not. But I guarantee you it did not hurt him with the, the uh, cash haul he got. Well, the, the haul he got <laughs> for, for the Buckeyes. Staking with college, but we're going to flip to basketball and a little controversy here. University of uh, Michigan guard Xavier Simpson, one of their top players on an NCAA tournament team as of now, he crashed the athletic director's son's car and then lied about it. Now it has come out. Repeat that again now. The athletic director's son's car was crashed. This is at Michigan. Basketball players, one of their top players. 
and they lied about it. He he was driving the son's car. The son in the the case of full disclosure, apparently they are friends. The son is a a manager on the team, and they have a, a relationship, but. From a uh, NCAA rules standpoint. It, it, that's what I'm trying to get to. They had to lie about a college kid driving another college kid friend who he has a relationship with car because it violated NCAA rules. So which one is which one do I address the stupidity of? I mean, think of think about the, that is absolutely ridiculous that they're, they're, they had, they felt the need to lie because a college kid wrecked another college kid's car. And they lied about it. And now it's a serious allegation. But the number one team in the SEC, their head coach was on video saying don't pay him too much get him pay him but don't pay him too much see that's that. and, and when i hear people get on this radio station and radio stations around the world and have a problem with players leaving and transferring and getting paid that's the hypocrisy of college athletics i mean and you were explaining that story i said is he saying what i think is he telling me that a guy, a kid, is, is that, first of all, a, a university felt the need to lie because the athletic director's son's car was crashed by an athlete who is a manager on the team who is a friend and a relationship with the player. It shouldn't matter if he was a friend or relationship or not. I mean, that that is something that happens every day on this campus with relationships everywhere. I'm in the insurance business, I promise you. 20 and 18 and 21, and th they, they're wrecking their parents' cars and their friends' cars on a regular basis. And the fact that this could be an NCAA violation and they get into more trouble. And you know that the big booger bear with the NCAA is if you lie. So it's going to become a big deal. Hopefully the kid won't get any, any trouble, eligibility, but that is stupidity at the highest level. And once again, it's the NCAA. All around, every. <laughs> it's, just, it's just crazy, crazy. That probably would have gone away. The fact that they tried to, you know, cover up or, or distort what happened, and then just the fact that it is an issue that they had to cover it up. I think it's a good thing. Um, I think it creates another avenue for uh, guys uh, to continue their uh, football careers at some level. Um, and, and I think it'll create an opportunity for, you know, there's late, <coughs> excuse me, there's late developers coming to college and they go to D1 schools and, uh, I mean, uh, smaller D1 schools, D, uh, FCS schools, et cetera and they still get an opportunity to play at the next level, I think this will be just another step in that process. I hope it's well managed. I hope that it's, it's going to be a little bit more of a um, uh, you know, entertainment factor, understanding that it's not. Th these leagues mess up when they try to be the NFL. Don't try to be the NFL. Just try to provide something that people will enjoy year-round, and that is football. Uh, and provide it in a way and a fashion and don't try to don't try to compete with the NFL. Be where you are. You're a bridge between the college game and the NFL game. Accept that role. Don't try to compete. Don't try to be more than that. And enjoy the spring and give us some football. So absolutely. More football. Uh, and and, we, and it's going to be with some guys that we recognize and some names we recognize along with guys who are trying to make a name for themselves. So I think it's great. We'll continue this conversation and more right here on the Martin Houston Show. Stay tuned for more. Coming up next, we're going to talk a little bit more in-depth recruiting right here on the Martin Houston Show.
In the heart of a deal that saved thousands during February at Townsend Nissan. Light traffic this morning, and we've gotten a few reports of light snow around around Lake and in areas of Northport, but mainly just light rain. So please drive carefully, and if you see conditions, give us a call. I'm Captain Ray. South Park Design is the official outfitter of the Mark Suzuki Show. If you're looking for a company that can help you grow, brand, market, or build your business, then South Mark Design is up for the task. Call Scott Smith at 205-292-4680. That's 205-292-4680. Whether it's promotional items, corporate apparel, or t-shirts for your team members, South Mark Design is the company that can help you. Find them online at southmarkdesign.com. Are you looking for the perfect gift for that hard to buy person in your life? Well, go no further. Bama Bourbon and Beyond is coming February 29th at the Drish House. Tickets are limited to the first 150. Listen up, Tuscaloosa. And he needs your help. Julio Jones will not pass on any until he's reached his record. Hey, you can even double what you're getting on your own tax refund. Help Julio out and say you in his career. You can be a part of the team at the one and only Julio Championship dealerships, brand new Optimus, the superstar, the Kia Telluride could be yours. Stop in today and make a deal with Julio Jones Kia during this record-breaking sales event. Julio Jones Championship Dealership, located off Greensboro Avenue, just across from the Academy. for your home, remember New Floors to Go, 3621 Greensboro Avenue. New Floors to Go. Tide 100. Saturday, a few showers possible. On Tide 100. Plus years specializing in graphic design services, commercial printing, promotional products, advertising, and so much more. Basically, any and everything you would need to advertise, promote, and grow your business through strong partnerships, strong customer service, and creative ideas to help you market and grow your business. Give Scott a call at 205 292 or email Scott IS. You're back in with the Martin Houston Show on Tide 100.9. Don't forget about Stephanie Flowers. Stephanie Flowers presents the Be My Valentine promotion where you have an opportunity to win a $75 uh, gift card credit to uh, Stephanie Flowers. Uh, you will be able to pick that prize up on February 13th. Um, and you'll just have to drop by the store uh, the physical location or uh, call them to place that order. But you'll have a $75 credit. All you need to do is get in on the nomination. You can do that uh, by calling and being a part of the program, 205-342-9904. Also, you can give me a score prediction for Alabama versus the Georgia Bulldogs. Alabama needs to get back on the winning track. Help them get there by predicting the score. You get in on that and you win you get a couple of nominations but you get nominated and you'll be in the random drawing just by giving me your score and participating with the Martin Houston show that's the Stephanie Flowers be my Valentine promotion find them online at stephanieflowers.com stephanieflowers.com and you can select your date meaning you go ahead and order today select the delivery date of February 14th so you don't miss out on showing some love to your sweetheart on Valentine's Day. All right, let's get back to the conversation. 
conversation. We got Pat, who's been patiently waiting. Pat, you're in with the Martin Houston Show. What's on your mind, man? Uh, I wanted to uh, wait till you wanted to talk about uh, uh, me, the best contributor. Uh, uh, I mean, that's, that's where we're going. Yeah, I, I'm just, I was just going to kind of talk through some of the different guys, so you can go ahead and whichever guy you talk about, we'll pick up the conversation from there. Okay. Man, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, this, uh, but a contributor uh, right off the bat uh, and be in the rotation he, he appears to be that good uh, and but I want to talk about uh, do you what do you think about does our inside linebacker are pretty much a set uh, with McMillan uh, that I don't know red shirt of uh, these linebackers. Do you think, here's my question, uh, do you think DeMoy Kennedy uh, what do you think that? Well, <laughs> yeah, Kennedy is, I mean, he's such an elite athlete and, um, and and you look at uh, how safe and you usually you know, work with these types of athletes. DeMore Kennedy is one of those guys that if he pans out and matures and develops, Pat, you may be looking at a three-year guy. Um, and, and, I, and what I've seen Saban do with the three-year guys is play them on special teams, first of all, and foremost. And, and you know, we've seen the, the Reuben Fosters and, you know, Reggie Raglins and all those guys, and we couldn't wait to get see them on the field because of what they did on special teams. So I think worst case, that's where DeMore Kennedy uh, gets in the action. But this guy, I, I saw him play in high school uh, in person, uh, and the growth that he went from his junior year, uh, I mean, from his sophomore year to his junior year, junior year to his senior year, is absolutely amazing. And he, he's, a, you know, he played – both sides of the ball, he's athletic. I just think the kid's going to find his way on the field some. Um, I, I know we got Josh McMillan back and we got uh, Dylan Moses back, but I don't think we're going to go into another season where we have uh, inexperienced linebackers. I think Saban's going to use this opportunity to get some of those guys, especially if we're beating people um, the way we beat the, the lesser opponents. So I think the more Kennedy actually gets some reps at Linebacker, and won't be surprised if he doesn't work himself into the rotation. And then uh, the red shirt rule was a wonderful, wonderful thing for incoming freshmen. But you know, what, where do you think our linebackers were the weakest last year? Pass, pass coverage. No, no, I'm saying I'm talking about what what they do. That I don't. I think we were exposed in our nickel and dime packages with. And I know that Dylan Moses will be there, but who's going to be the number two guy? You know, Shane Lee was the number two guy. I mean, was the number one guy. Shane Lee will not be the nickel and dime linebacker next year uh, with the guys that we have coming back. Uh, I, I think DeMoy Kennedy, uh, he, he, he's athletic. He covers a lot of ground. He played pass coverage in high school. He was a pass rusher in high school. I Don't be surprised if that joker, he played outside linebacker. Don't be surprised if he doesn't work his way uh, even into being a pass rusher. But but because he's such a good pass rusher, I think he may even work himself uh, into some playing time, Pat, uh, when we want to create blitz packages with the linebackers. Yeah. And, uh, hey, don't, don't leave out uh, that Uh, speed to be able to cover in passes. Oh, I, I think Josh McMillan is going to be part of the part of the rotation. I I'm not I'm not selling him short. I just don't think that he'll be. He was never. He was the play caller, the brainiac. He was the guy that made everybody better. But he was not the guy that stayed on the field when they went. You know, one single linebacker. So that's why I'm saying I don't think that they'll put him in a different spot this year than what he's been in his past. In his past, what he was that second linebacker, and because of his experience, he had worked himself into being the play caller. So I think I think he'll contribute to this team in a big way next year. 
Like there's any possibility Jerry Sanders at tight end. That uh, Jerry Sanders is too good an athlete to keep off the field. And uh, he is, uh, it, hey, if you just go through and read his bio, I don't know if he was playing with Girl Scouts down in Texas. Which, which I, I know he wasn't, but I mean, Texas, they, were, they most of those kids are 19 years old. They hold them back in the second and third grade. Uh, so that they're better athletes that they're full grown men whenever they graduate high school. Yeah, we got a couple of local schools that do that. And I mean, I'm serious. We, we got a, we, there's, there's a local school here that almost every one of their seniors is, you know, 18 and turning 19 uh, during the my season. Son, my son's high school over in Mississippi, when we were in middle school, that whole group, they were. point about Drew Sanders, I, you know, I think that the need at linebacker, outside linebacker, puts Drew uh, right in the mix to compete for PT in the spring as the outside linebacker. But based on how other people develop and how smart of a player he is, do not, I would not be surprised at all uh, based on how, because see, Carl Tucker is not going to be here. Um this, this spring. He, he, Hank said he was going to be a summer enrollee. So, uh, with that said, don't be surprised if you don't see even some packages for him. Uh, I mean, they make comparisons that he has the potential to be as good or better than O.J. Howard was at tight end, uh, much less at linebacker. So, uh, Nick Saban, I think he's, he's changing as a coach. He's getting smarter, and I think he's willing to – to potentially experiment a little bit and do some different things. So, Pat, I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to get the break, but I, I'm going to tell you something that, that's going to get you excited now, Pat. What's the what's the one thing? Yes, I mean, they're worried about Georgia, and they, but this is fun or take some time to get acclimated with that cruise ship on the virtual reality tour. Because it'll make it so much easier. Get around on the boat and enjoy things. I'm a, Pat, I am going to stay in my room to the pool. <laughs> I, I, I'm just relaxing. Hey, yeah, that's right. Hey, uh, Pat, but let me tell you, what's the biggest thing that we thought Bryce Young had to do to be ready to play? But, but what did we say? Everybody said that he was too little, right? That he needed to gain weight, right? Isn't that what everybody's been saying? That he, they don't know if he's big enough? But, but I'm trying to tell you something, Pat. I'm trying to get you excited this morning. Someone was at a meeting that conveyed to me that the coaches said Bryce Young has put on 20 pounds of the right weight already. Oh, there, there, there. There you go, Pat. There you go, Pat. There you go, Pat. <laughs> but think about that, Pat. Bryce Young, the only thing everybody said is, I don't know if he's going to be big enough his freshman year. Well, it looks like he's well on his way. I told somebody, even if he only, even if they said he gained 20, it doesn't matter. If he gains 10, if he gained 10 already, I'm okay with that. But but they said he's put on 20 pounds since, uh, since enrolling. Uh, and since his high school season and then rolling in Alabama, he's 20 pounds heavier uh, and it's the right weight. So, and a lot of these guys that put on anywhere, the smaller guys that's enrolled have all put on or and are dropped uh, weight accordingly. Most of them have put on 10 pounds or more. So, uh, Cochran is earning his money right now. Thanks, Pat. Appreciate you, man. You too. Bye. All right. Uh, if you missed that, we'll talk a little bit more about these recruits uh, coming up. Bryce Young. Uh, reportedly having put on 20 pounds of muscle mass already. Uh, the nutrition.
nutrition that, that Saban goes into and uses uh, is a game changer. And if this young man can keep the feet and ability that he has to scramble and move with the ball while getting a little bigger, mm, interesting conversation. Will he be the starter coming out of spring or going into USC or at some point in the season? We'll talk about that and more right here on the Martin Houston Show. Thanks. <laughs> 